Let's see if the story is familiar to you. You're up pretty big in a game. You're in control. Next thing you know, you've lost the match. And the other team is congratulating themselves up at the net. I'm going to give you a tip in this video on how to potentially avoid this kind of outcome. Let's get into it. To understand how we got here, let's rewind the match a few minutes. This is a tournament that these teams are playing in. The format of this tournament is one 21 point game. That constitutes the match. The team on the far side in the Salmon has been in control the entire match. They've been ahead uh, the entire match. At one point, they were up 10 to 1 in this match. If you want to watch a video explaining that portion of the match, you can watch CJ's video on Better Pickleball on this. I'll link to it above. But basically, the, the team on the other side is in control of the match. They're currently at 17-14-2 serving. They're going to get sided out here and turn over the serve to the other team, but they're still in control of this match. They turn over the, the serve to the other team. The, the team on the near side gets a serve a couple of times, but doesn't score any points on this service rotation. And basically, the serve will come back to the team on the far side uh, at 17-14-1. So again, the team on the far side right now is in control of the match. Let's watch a few more points and see how it gets away. So the serve goes over to the team on the far side. They're gonna start serving here at 17, 14, one. One thing that's really important when you're serving and you're trying to score points, obviously, is to make sure that you have productive uh, serves, that you, you're productive when you're serving. You try and at least make the point productive. If you lose the, the rally, that's fine, but you want the rally to be a productive rally. That's something that we really work on inside VI Pickleball. You're going to see here that both of these attempts by the serve team are unproductive. Uh, neither third shot clears the net, so there's nothing for the team on the near side to do there other than just basically return serve and then the, the rally's over and that's it. So the serve goes over to the near team at 14-17-1. They score on a trickle over ball. That kind of thing happens when you're playing pickleball. Uh, I think uh, players sometimes get uh, get you know a little upset about those kind of things. Just part of the game, no big deal. So 15-17-2 uh, now after the team on the far side sided out uh, the first serve there. There you're going to see a short return by the team on the far side. That becomes a repeated uh, fence, if you will, by the team on the far side, allowing the team on the near side to take the NBZ too easily, the non-Bali zone line too easily, and score a point. So they score a point there. This is a deeper return and, you know, better work by the by the uh, near team to basically win this point here. So now it's uh, going to be 17-17-2. So this is the first time since the match was at 0-0 that it's tied. So the team on the far side has been in control the entire time and now they're tied. Another short return allows an attack, puts pressure on the serving on the return team, on the salmon team on the far side resulting in another point so the near team now has taken the lead in the match for the first time in the entire match at 18 17 uh 18 17 2 so what you're going to see here is you're going to see a side out by the uh by the far team they're able to side out the near team here and so what happens here now that the serve is going to go back to the far team they're going to be serving at 17 18 1 what you'll notice is the far team makes no adjustments here. We're going to talk about it more in a second on the board. But the far team makes no adjustment and stays in their positions at 17, 18, 1. Again, that would be an unproductive serve um, served opportunity by the far team there. Missing a third shot, putting no pressure on the team on this side. So 17, 18, 2. And then, you know, basically still no adjustment by the team on the far side. Even though it's a little more productive because they hit the ball over the net a couple of times, it's now a side out. So now it comes over to the near team again at 18-17-1. So the, the team on the far side makes no adjustment. Another short return, another point. So, you know, the, the match is starting to get away from the far team and the far team is making no adjustments. And again, we're going to uh, break that down on the board for you in a minute. But you'll see that the far team makes no adjustments. And I want to be clear. Nothing here is intended as a criticism of the FAR team. Uh, what we're talking about is play, and we appreciate the efforts of everybody on the court. Uh, allows us to give you this analysis. But basically what the FAR team does here is the FAR team ends up stuck at 17 in this position that they don't like, which we'll discuss more in a minute. But they, they end up stuck in this position that they don't like, uh, and they end up allowing the team on this side to go from 14 to 19, uh, in basically a blink of an eye, if you will. And then now at 17-19, the far team is going to score its first point in uh, in a while now and get it to 18. But as the old saying goes, it's a too little, 
too late. Let's fast forward a few minutes in the match. And this is at 2018, the near team serving. After a few shots uh, exchanged, the near team will come out successful and win the match 21-18, having overcome a deficit in this match. Let's talk about what the far team could have done to perhaps avoid this result. Let's talk about what happened during that match from the 17-14 lead to the 21-18 loss by the far team. I'm going to be focusing only on the far team, which is up here. So this uh, yellow player here is going to be the female player and the blue player will be the male player. What happened there was when they went to serve here, they were at 16-14. So at this point in the game, they were at 16-14-2 when they were serving here. The female player served over here, they won that point. Then they switched sides, right? Which is was mandated by the score, dictated by the score. Now the score was 17, 14, 2. They lost that that rally. They lost that, that rally and sided out. So now the ball went over here to serve. And so now this team was returning in this position. This team stayed in this formation for a total of 16 rallies. They played in this exact formation a total of 16 rallies. They served five times in this formation, did not score a point. The other team was sided out five times as well. The six scoring points during this formation, this team only scored one, and the, the far side team scored five points. So during the time that this team was in this formation, this team was able to score five points, and this team was only able to score one point. By the time that this team came out of this formation to where this player, the female player was on the even or right side of the court and the male players on the left or, or odd side of the court. The score at this point in the match was 18 to 19. So, you know, as I said earlier in the video, this is a little, little too little too late in this situation. And if you look at it, the reason this team is an even score in this formation is because this is the formation preferred by this team. This team prefers to be in this formation, not in this formation. They do not want to be in this formation. They prefer to be in this formation. The problem is when they got to 17, they were again in this formation with the male player on the right or even side and the female player on the odd or left side. At 17, they got basically stuck in this formation. And when they got stuck in this formation, this team took advantage of it and went from 14 to 19 while this team was stuck in a formation that it did not prefer to play in. The question then is, what could this team have done to avoid this formation, which is not their preferred formation, not the formation that makes them the strongest team? What they could have done, it's fairly simple, is to stack, particularly on serve, where now you get the formation that you want to play in and you avoid this kind of a run, allowing the other team not only to catch up to you, but to overtake you and ultimately win the match. All right, so how does this apply to you? The way this applies to you is that if you get stuck in a formation that you don't want to be in or in a formation that's just not working, whether you want to be in it or not, what you're going to do is you're going to implement the stack on serve, which is the easiest form of stacking. What you're going to do is this. Think of it as the two rotation, two serve rotation stack. It's basically a way of thinking about it in shorthand. If you have served a one and a two side out and then comes back, you get the serve again and it's a one and a two and a side out, no questions asked. The very next time that this player goes to serve, this player is going to stack behind this player, and basically this player is going to slide over here. What that does is it shows a different formation to your opponents. It also allows you to play from a different formation on your side. You've obviously been playing, you've played on this formation several times in a row to no effect. So what you're going to do is rather than stay in the same formation that's not working for you, is you're now going to take control of the match and you're going to slide over, slide this player over to create a different look for your opponents and also create a different feel for how you're playing the, the serve side here and hopefully be able to break through that ice of not being able to score when you're on serve. As a pickleball player, you always want to try and be in control of the game that you're playing. You want to be the one dictating terms. You want to be the protagonist in your, in your game and how you play your game. This is a technique that you can use to, to reacquire control of a situation that's getting away from you. Uh, this serve stack is the simplest form of stacking. If you can incorporate this type of stack into your game, bring it in when you're being ineffective on serve, particularly after two serve rotations, even sooner if you want to, but particularly after two serve rotations, 
You want to bring the serve stack into your into your pickleball game next time you're playing. That'll help you take control of the situation and improve your chances of winning that game. If you want to learn more about how to stack when you're playing pickleball, I'm going to link to a video up here that'll show you how to how to use stacking to help protect that middle. When that middle is vulnerable and being attacked, you can use stacking to protect it and avoid giving up points during your next pickleball game. And if you want to definitely learn more about pickleball, a lot more in-depth about pickleball, download our free guide at wearepickleball.com. I'll link to it below. Be well.